Ever since I've started reviewing movies on YouTube, this is one of those movies that I've been dying to review. And now I finally get to do that. Terminator 2 Judgment Day it was released in 1991 and is once again written and directed by James Cameron and stars Arnold Schwarzenegger. The movie once again opens up in the futuristic wasteland of Los Angeles in 2029. Similar to how the first movie opens up, except this time it's an all-out war. There are Terminators and Hunter Killers coming in, shooting the humans, but the humans are fighting back and kicking ass rather than just hiding in the rocks. There's voiceover by Sarah Connor that briefly goes over the events of the first Terminator movie and then mentions that in 1995 they sent another Terminator back in time to assassinate John Connor when he was just 10 years old. Sarah Connor has been confined to a mental hospital so John Connor is under the care of a foster family and is this rebellious douchebag who thought his mom was crazy and doesn't believe anything about the future and what she's told him. So pretty much he's not going to do well if another Terminator is after him. But the Resistance sends another soldier back in time to protect John Connor. But here's where things get interesting. The soldier that the Resistance sends back is actually a reprogrammed T-800 played by Arnold Schwarzenegger. And if you remember from the first movie, Arnold Schwarzenegger was the villain of the movie. So who did Skynet send back? Well, they sent back another Terminator, a different model, the T-1000, played by Robert Patrick, who is a lot smaller than Arnold Schwarzenegger, but this is deceiving because he's actually a lot more powerful. He's faster, he's made of liquid metal, and it's almost like he's indestructible. And that's one of the brilliant parts of this movie, is that... James Cameron could have easily picked someone who's as big as Arnold, since this was the movie where he was going to be the hero, not the villain. But he decided to cast someone who was a lot smaller. That way, the audience could be fooled into thinking, oh, Arnold Schwarzenegger's got this. He's going to beat this guy easily. Only for them to go, oh shit, this guy actually is proven to be a challenge. So basically, the entire movie is the T-800 protecting John Connor and Sarah Connor as they try to survive and destroy the T-1000 and stop Judgment Day once and for all. Now, everyone has talked about this movie over and over again. It's one of the most celebrated movies of all time. It's one of the best sequels of all time. It's certainly the best in the Terminator movies. So all I can do is voice my opinion because... Oh my god, I love this movie so much. This is one, like, it's in my top ten of favorite movies of all time. Huh? So let's delve into why I love this movie so much and why it's a masterpiece. Well, for starters, everything that the first Terminator did well or didn't do so well, this movie did better or got right. Huh? The action scenes are a lot better this time around. They're more epic. Their cars getting smashed left and right. Uh, you're completely invested in what's going on. It never slows down and you're never bored. And in terms of effects, it's also a marvel. Obviously, the practical effects are still really good. Like the animatronics and the makeup from Stan Winston. Because that Arnold Schwarzenegger head in the first Terminator movie replaced by completely realistic animatronics and really badass makeup. But the big show stealer in terms of visual effects is the CG used on the T-1000. And this is an example of CG used the right way. The T-1000 can easily like break apart when shot at close range with a shotgun or even uh, some other heavy duty weapons, but he can easily repair himself by morphing the liquid metal back together. And that's when the CG is used. It's used when the T-1000 is repairing itself, it's used when it's morphing, it's used when it transforms its hands into knives and stabbing weapons. Everything else that could be done through animatronics is done through animatronics. And everything that could never be accomplished through animatronics is accomplished with CG. And it still looks good today, even after 24 years. And I know that back in 1988, there was that water tube scene in the abyss which was also directed by james cameron and then in 1993 there were dinosaurs with jurassic park which uh, admittedly is revolutionary but this was the movie that really showed the world what cg could do in a mainstream film and back to the t-1000 if i may 
he is one of the best villains I've seen in any film. Like, he is threatening, he's quick, he's mean, and the fact that he's dressed like a police officer gives our heroes no chance because our heroes are on the run from the authorities. So the fact that the T-1000 blends in both literally because he can transform into any kind of human and metaphorically because his default costume is a police uniform, it's like the heroes don't have a chance against this guy. The plot is very similar to the first movie, but this is one of those moments where a sequel can redo the first movie's plot again, but because it has enough twists and it's epic enough, to get away with, it comes across as even better. Because this movie really is on a grand scale, and all the characters go through story arcs, at least the main three. John Connor is played by Edward Furlong, and he starts out in the movie as this really rebellious shithead who's really kind of unlikable in a way. You're like, why would I ever like this guy, and how can I picture him as the future leader of the Resistance? But when the Terminator enters his life, he becomes a little more likable, he teaches the Terminator to be more civil, to not kill anyone and act more human, and he comes across as a nice kid, and you can totally see how this kid could become the future leader of the Resistance if the war were to ever happen. Sarah Connor is once again played by Linda Hamilton. She's a lot better in this movie. In the first movie, she was very scared and a bit whiny at times, but with good reason. You buy into it. Here, she's a lot more independent, tough, but she's not just some woman with guns that kicks ass. Huh? The reason she acts the way she does is because she is paranoid to death about what's going to happen with the future. She's destined to change the future and also protect her son by any means necessary. Her character arc is very similar to that of Ellen Ripley in Aliens, again directed by James Cameron, where Ripley is so determined to protect Newt by any means necessary and to wipe out the xenomorph race for good so she can have a positive outlook on her future. And in the end of this movie, Sarah Connor very much changes her mood and has a positive outlook because of the machine. And she starts out in the movie hating the T-800. In fact, there's a scene in the director's cut where she almost destroys the T-800 because of her experiences from the first movie. But as the movie goes on, she learns to trust the T-800 and realize that if the Terminator can learn the values of human life, then maybe humans can too. Which brings me to the character of the T-800, played again by Arnold Schwarzenegger. Arnold Schwarzenegger as the T-800, I think, works better as a hero than he does as a villain. I mean, don't get me wrong, he's really good as the villain, but here, not only does he have a lot more to do, like more dialogue, he's more active, but he also has a character arc. Yeah, a machine. An emotionless machine played by a guy who's really not a great actor has a character arc and you really buy into it. He starts out the movie as this mindless killing machine and once he meets John Connor and starts to become a father figure, he becomes more civilized, but he also learns the value of human life, as I mentioned when describing Sarah Connor. So by the end of the movie, he really gets a grasp on human life and when he has to sacrifice himself in order to secure a safe future for humanity, it's heartbreaking. You kind of get emotional. I mean, it's really, it really goes to show how masterful this movie is, not only in action and special effects, but in the story and characters. I could really talk endlessly about this movie, so I'll just wrap up by saying something that's negative. And I really don't want to say anything negative about this movie, but it's something that just irritates me to no end. But it's not going to affect my rating. Let me say that. It's not going to affect my rating of this movie. There is a scene in this movie, right before Sarah Connor breaks out of the mental hospital, where one of the employees ties her to the bed to make sure that she doesn't escape. And for some weird reason, he leans into her and then licks her face. And I just like, what? Why? Why is that there? That it serves no purpose. It's weird, creepy, gross. This is like the end of Kingsman where they have this joke about anal sex. And it's just like, that is such in bad taste to where it almost kind of derails the movie. But because this movie is so well made, I instantly got back into the story and characters 
despite that weird, disgusting sequence. I, I don't I still don't know why it's there. But in the long run, I'll wrap things up here. I don't really throw terms out there like uh, one of the best movies ever made that often. So when I'm telling you that Terminator 2 Judgment Day is one of the best fucking movies ever made, that is a fact and you can take it to the bank. It is a masterpiece on every level. The action sequences, the special effects, the story, the characters, the fact that it's a sequel that's better than the original. There are just so many great things about this movie that I wish I had a higher rating than get off your ass and go see it right now. But as it stands, that's the rating I'm going to give it. This is one of the greatest movies of all time. If you've never seen it, go watch it. You have no excuse not to watch this movie. And you don't even have to watch the first Terminator movie because it fills you in on the events of the first Terminator immediately. So you can just jump right into this one and you won't feel like you've missed anything at all. One of my absolute favorite movies of all time and my favorite action movie of all time. And that's my review for Terminator 2 Judgment Day. Now, Terminator Genesis opens up next Wednesday. So my original idea was to drop Terminator 3 and 4 because I've already talked about the first two James Cameron movies. So I feel like I should just stop right there. But I imagine that some people out there are curious enough to know what I thought of the other two movies. So here's what I'm going to do. On Monday, I'll be reviewing Terminator 3 Rise of the Machines. Then on Tuesday, I'll be reviewing Terminator Salvation. And then on Wednesday, I'll be reviewing Terminator Genesis. And then my next series of Retro Wednesday reviews will be all the Pixar movies. So basically next week, you get two Retro Wednesdays, but on a Monday and a Tuesday. So until next week, leave a comment telling me what you thought of Terminator 2, if you've seen it. What did you think? Like, subscribe, share me with your friends. And this is the real Mr. Robinson telling you there is only one... And I'll be back.